Welcome to our next video within ACCA's FA1 paper, Recording Financial Transactions. This video is devoted to sales tax, an area which features in the notes within the uh, sales and receivables and purchase and payables uh, chapters. However, this video will be based on our notes I will explain the concept of the sales tax in detail. So sales tax or in most countries called a VAT value added tax is the concept given to us by the French. It is a revolutionary context concept which sort of makes the government receive taxes with each transformation of the product within the value chain. That's very good for governments because then they don't really care whether the ultimate and final recipient of the goods, the ultimate customer, whether they buy the goods or not. And each every link in the value chain, the government takes their share. How does it work in practice? Now, we buy goods at 1000 plus 20% VAT. So technically speaking, we pay 1200. This will be accounted for in the following way. Obviously, cash we spend 1200. We bought goods, so we've got some purchases. But the purchases will be recorded net of VAT. The rest of that, or maybe I should put this here in the middle, the VAT in the transaction price will be put on the VAT control account. We paid that 200 VAT, but that's sort of like our receivable because we will be able to claim it back from the VAT we're supposed to pay on the sales transactions which we incur. So now we sell those goods for 1500 plus VAT. So we get 1800. The way we will account for it is we get 1800 cash, we have revenue of 1500 because revenue will always be shown net, and the 300 goes to the VAT control account. Now, at the end of the month, or at the end of the quarter, depending on how the VAT regulations work in a given country, the VAT has to be paid. Now, how much do we owe to the uh, tax office? Well, let's balance off the account. Carry down balance is 100 brought down balance is 100. So we owe 100 to the tax office. We need to pay it. And our VAT dues are settled. Now that's an idea of how VAT works in practice. There may be a lot of variations there. Remember that many states apply the regular rates or standard rates, but they also apply reduced rates. Reduced rates are applied to 
goods that for some reason the state wants to promote the consumption of or they want to help the ultimate user. In many countries the reduced rate will be applied to children's clothes, food, um, many things that everyone has to buy and because the VAT is ultimately suffered by the uh, consumer then for those priority goods um, states often decide to apply the reduced rate. Now let's work out this example again as if we sell at a reduced rate of 10% rather than 20% standard rate. If we sell at a reduced rate, now some things will change. If we sell at a reduced rate, we will only get 1650. Our revenue will still be 1500, but the VAT control account will be credited with only the 150 of the VAT that we claimed from our customers at a reduced rate. Now that, as you see, will lead to the situation where the carried down balance will be on the credit side, the brought down balance on the debit side, meaning, actually this time, it's the tax office that's, that owes us something. We will get the VAT refund from the state. because we sell at a reduced rate. In some extreme cases, the reduced rate can also be a 0%. All right? However, having said that, you must clearly differentiate the 0% reduced rate and exempt. Certain services, certain goods, or whatever the, the government decides, may be exempt from VAT. The example is, all around Europe, financial services are exempt. Take an example of a bank. Banks don't charge you VAT on their services because financial services are exempt. Now if we work out our example again where our sales are exempt things will look totally different. If our sales are exempt we will not be able to claim input VAT because that 200 of VAT here was called input VAT. Input VAT is normally claimed against output VAT, the VAT which we would have to pay. However, if our sales are exempt, we will not claim input VAT. So we paid 1200 cash and that is the amount of our purchases. Gross of VAT since sales are exempt. Our revenue is obviously 1500. There are no VAT settlements simply because our sales were exempt. If you have a mixture of exempt and vatable sales, then usually the government's allowed to claim the proportion of the input tax that reflects your proportion of sales.